Hey guys, it's your boy Joe back at it again, codingphase.com. In this video, I want to go in and talk about development skills that I'm glad I missed the bandwagon. Okay, and let's just be honest, right? There's a lot of skills that pop up, new framework, new languages constantly. And guess what? You don't have to learn every single one that just pops up. And just because it's trending doesn't mean that you need to learn it. Okay, so let's get into it. Now, before we begin, I do want to give a shout out to all the creators and the communities of this skills, this languages, this frameworks, this packages, this <laughs> whatever you want to call them, libraries, whatever they, they fall under the category, right? Um, I want to give a shout out to them. This is no shot to anybody because I think they all are good for their own, you know, niches and, you know, whatever, right? Um, so I give them a shout out because I know everything that uh, is here on this list doesn't mean that it's not good. It's just for me, it, there was no point of me learning them or focusing on them, okay? And usually how do I focus on something and how do I choose which is the one that I want to go in and learn? Very simple. Are there jobs out there? That's number one. Number two, can I make money with it? independently and number three do i like it that's it it's that simple so yeah let's go on to the list now the first one we have here is meteor and meteor was super popular years ago probably i don't know 2015 i would say 2016 around there and a lot of people were constantly saying oh you gotta learn meteor you gotta learn meteor and i think they had a really good idea of like how to do full stack applications with javascript but it just it never picked up. I always kind of felt like it was going to be something niche. So I kind of just didn't pay attention to it. And to be honest, I'm glad I didn't learn it. The next one we have here is Elixir. And Elixir is a cool language, right? It's a functional uh, language. And at the end of the day, it was supposed to be like kind of the replacement of Ruby in a sense, right? Um, just because of like popularity and a lot of people were saying, oh man, you got to learn Elixir, you got to learn Elixir. And yes, Elixir has accomplished a lot of cool things. Everything from, you know, uh, even WhatsApp to like, I think like Discord, like there's so many companies that use Elixir, but I think Elixir is so niche for a specific type of applications that I just, I never learned it. And, you know, I never invested time. And I do want to mention like, I dabbled into all of this technologies that I'm mentioning in this video. But when I say I didn't learn it, like I didn't go deep into it. I just used it for what it was and checked it out and said, eh, can I really use it? And then I look, do, do they have jobs? Is there enough jobs for me to, to say I should learn this when, you know, is this like an industry standard? And Elixir was one of those things where there was companies using it, but not enough companies where I felt like, you know what, it was worth my time at the time okay another framework that at one point had a lot of hype was elm and people were talking about elm like oh this is going to replace javascript this is going to replace all the frameworks right it's all functional and this and that and you know it's going to be so great but once you start looking at the syntax of elm you start noticing it's like yo hold on bro like <laughs> I'm not switching on what I'm doing right now to go in and build applications like this. This this thing to me is a mess, right? I mean, in, in just the syntax by itself. It, yes, it could be performant. That's great. But at the same time, it's like, bro, like, no, I'm not going to go in. If I'm really good with JavaScript, I'm not going to go in and focus on something completely different um, than what we've been doing for the past, I don't know, 10, 20 years. The next one here is Mobex. And Mobex was basically a state management uh, library that you can use with React and you can pretty much use it with anything. I'm pretty sure I've seen it with Angular and, and every type of framework. I even seen it with something like Dart. <laughs> like I've seen people use this. Um, but to be honest with you, I just felt like it, it was never going to catch on and become like as popular as people thought especially when you have Redux, right? And I'm coming from the world of React and I'm like, okay, if Redux already solves this problem, right, of managing the state, and yes, it's not perfect, but why would I go in and learn Mobex, especially when comparing the type of jobs that were there at the time, everybody was using Redux. So it's like, it was a no brainer. I'm not learning this one. Ooh, yes, <laughs> I'm bringing it back. Coffee script. Some of you guys have heard of this. Some of you guys have never heard of this. Now, 
Coffee script is actually not that bad. This is actually my favorite thing out of this whole list that I have here that I will actually give it a chance. Um, but it was like, like a no brainer. This thing wasn't going to go nowhere. I do like the idea of it, right? So basically it's like JavaScript mixed with Python. Okay. And this was pretty popular in the Ruby community. Now, um, there was things like, you know, coffee script tool, which was going to give us classes and a whole bunch of extra features. But guess what? <laughs> you know, once ES6 was out and all the new versions of, of ES next, right? Whatever version we're up to right now, uh, this thing became obsolete. Okay. So it's like, if you went in and you follow the hype, you basically kind of just like wasted your time to be honest with you. Okay. And I'm pretty sure there's an application out there still on coffee script, but yeah, this was kind of a waste of time, and, and I know it from the beginning. Now, this is another one, right? Vue.js. Vue.js is, is the, the darling of the open source, the baby of the open source, right? The, 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 the framework that's on a pedestal that everybody's rooting for. We want this one to win. And shoot, I want it to win too. But to be honest with you, I just felt like Vue.js has always been just a copy of what react already had and what angular had and whatever framework was out there has to okay now again somebody might say well isn't that a good thing joe if you basically have a framework that gives you the best of everything yes and no yes because okay cool it's gonna be a pretty solid framework but then at the same time it's like why would you go and switch from something like react or angular when you already know those things and then learn something new, right? And then that's the main reason why I just, I never jumped into Vue, you know, and shout out to even you. Uh, I think he's a great guy. I, I love that he's a hustler, right? Um, and somebody that grinds because it's hard to promote and, and, and to get a framework to the level that it is right now. But at the same time, I just, I never liked it. It, it was not for me, right? And at the same time, you know, when Vue came out, it was like, the, the, the highest point of React, and it's like, bro, all the jobs are on React. Why would I stop what I'm doing to learn Vue? It makes no sense. Even though, you know, the Laravel community kind of try to force it down our throats, it's fine. It is what it is, right? Some people like it. Some people love it. I like it. I just don't use it. Now, guys, if you like this video, make sure you like the video. Make sure you comment on the video and also subscribe to the channel. Now, if you do that, this actually enters you to get a chance to win my earnings for this month from YouTube. Okay, I'm giving away all of my earnings from YouTube to a lucky winner. All you have to do is follow us and basically, you know, like the videos and watch them. Okay, um, you do that for all the videos that we drop in this month, which is probably going to be like five or ten videos. And guess what? You you get the chance to win, you know, anything from a thousand to three thousand. And guess what? Every time that you guys watch the videos, it increases the pot. I think we could get it to five thousand dollars this month. But that's if you guys make the difference. You guys watch the videos. You like the videos. You comment on them and you subscribe to the channel. If you do that, the pot is going to go up. Okay, so yeah, let's continue. Now, right here, we got good old Dino JS. I don't know if you guys remember, like in 2020, 2021, like people were going crazy. There's like, oh, it's a new replacement to Node.js. We have to stop whatever we're doing. And literally, every single YouTuber, every single blogger, you know, went in, stopped everything that they were doing, right? And just say, we got to make a video about Dino JS. And yes, it got a lot of views. But at the same time, to me, I'm like, hold on, bro. Like, why would companies switch up after they already invested so much into Node.js? Why would they go into Dino JS just because now it's, it's running JavaScript and TypeScript? Like, that's cool, but that's not enough for me to say, hey, we're going to go in and start using Dino. And especially the way how you have to deal with like the, the packages, the modules, etc. Like, I, I'm, I'm good. Y'all could keep this one. Okay, y'all could keep this one. I, I, I'm, I'm not learning it. <laughs> now, this is the darling of the open source and the Twitter crowd, right? Everybody wants to tell you, you need to learn some Tailwind CSS. It's the future, man. Listen, man, you could keep this one. <laughs> I'm going to wait until this one passes. This reminds me something like, 
you know, like coffee script. Like it was hot at the moment, but we're not going to see this in a few years. Okay. I'll be honest with you guys. Okay. Um, yes, it's cool. There's a lot of cool things that's bringing into the table. Right. Uh, but at the same time, this right here is a given. Okay. I'm not going to go in and be writing basically inline styles on every freaking HTML tag. Adding random classes, oh, W24, H24, MD, W48, MD. This looks crazy that we even thinking about doing something like this in 2022, okay? Especially if you're actually good with CSS. This makes no sense to be doing, okay? I think this is great for a certain niche, the people that can't really do CSS like that, the people that um, enjoy maybe the backing a little bit more, right? And they say, you know what? I could just go in here, add a couple of styles. I don't have to really focus on, um, you know, creating, a, you know, like a custom CSS. I could just use what's already there and give it some some width, some padding, some change the background, got some, you know, some modules, some, some extra features, some extra little UI things. And I don't have to focus on anything. I got the little components, right? You could do that if you want to. I could actually do CSS. I, 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 I'll, I'll wait for this one to pass over, okay? And shout out to the guys from Syntax. You know, they kind of inspired me to make this video. And, um, and and it was when they got to the point where they talked about Tailwind. And um, I, I forgot the other guy's name. Not Wes Boss, but the other guy's name. He basically said, I'm waiting for this one to pass. And I'll be honest, I agree with him. Now, the last one here is actually Dart, right? And I'm going to be honest with you. It's very simple why I'm not focusing on Dart. I have zero interest in creating mobile applications. And I'm going to give you guys a little tip. If you're planning on becoming a web developer, stick to things that have to do with web development. This idea of just jumping around, one day you're doing machine learning, one day you're doing uh, mobile applications, one day you're doing game development, one day you're doing, um, I don't know, connecting little Arduinos with Raspberry Pis and having a baby that basically creates a USB with LED lights. Like, slow down, my guy. You're trying to do too much. You're trying to learn too much. And guess what? When you do that, you don't get to master anything. You don't get to actually do anything with your life, okay? You have to maximize on the time that you have available to learn skills that are relevant to the career path that you're going on. If you see something that pops up and just because people are talking about it, you have to go in and say, okay, will this help me in the long term to get to the goals that I want to get to? Is it worth it for me to learn these things, right? And that's the things that you got to ask yourself, okay? Because if not, you're just learning things to learn it and then you're on this treadmill of just constantly learning new things that you never actually built anything with, right? There's people that keep on learning and learning and learning and learning, don't have a job, have never had a client, have never built anything meaningful, have never done anything, but yet they know every framework, every library, every single thing that's out there. And when you ask them, hey man, what products have you launched? Uh... Oh, don't even say you me, boy. You look like a now, like I said, guys, you know, all of this technologies and skills and frameworks, etc. like they have a place, right? They have a place, they have a niche, right? But not for me, right? And, and as a web developer, sometimes we have to decide what's going to work for us. We don't have to learn every single thing that's out here, okay? We have to maximize on our time, and that's the only advice that I would give to anybody that's watching this, okay? Because technology come, frameworks come, languages come, and go constantly, okay? So whatever you thought that was hot right now, guess what? In six months, most likely something else better is going to come out, okay? So you have to actually go in and, and, and decide is it really worth it to you to learn everything that just pops up, okay? So again, there's a lot of things that I didn't jump in the bandwagon, and there's things that I'm not going to jump into the bandwagon for 2022 either, okay? Now, guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe, you like this video. Like I said before, you have a chance to win all of the income from this channel for this month. So 
all you have to do is like the video watch it leave a comment okay and be subscribed to the channel it already enters you to that okay now if you want to support what we do here and you want to check out our website codingphase.com we teach people how to code and pretty much we teach them everything that they need to know to get into a job as a web developer if you want to check it out check out the description i'm going to give you guys a pretty cool percentage off from the website so yeah go get started right i'll see you guys later peace